Hello, this is Chris Kelleher, W3CTK, a uh, member of the Delco Aries team, and just going to show you a basic um, introduction how to on the new uh, ICOM ID 5100s um, that we have in our B series Go kits. So basically, it's a dual channel. Um, power button is right over here, so just press on that. Uh, when it boots up, you'll see the model and your call sign if that's programmed in. Uh, and then you have your two channels, one left side, one right side. Um, this right now is our main channel. This is our sub channel. So if we broadcast, we're broadcasting on uh, S1 Tactical. Uh, if I just press on the side of the display, you can see now I changed my main channel. The knobs work for the side, so they're duplicated. So the knob on the bottom changes the channel, pretty simple. So here's our primary resource channel in Boofwin uh, that we use for our analog net. You can see the channel name and it scrolls so you can see the whole thing, the frequency. Uh, H is high power and then 005 is the channel number. Uh, up top it's the main <coughs> and then you can see it's FM uh, right here <coughs> means it's a repeater uh, minus offset and I'm sending a tune uh, on the right hand side you can see this is a simplex channel so there's no offset and there's no tone involved the knobs on the top uh, so the round inner knob is your squelch so if you're picking up a weak signal and you want to filter it out, you can turn your squelch up a little bit. Um, normally you want to keep it as low as possible. Um, and then if you turn it all the way, you can see it actually opens up the squelch so that I can hear um, the channel. Um, and right now I'm just picking up noise. So if I turn it back up a little bit, you can see it goes off and it's going to wait for a clean signal. Um, the little knob here is my volume. So if I turn the volume up and down. In the middle, there's some display, uh, your time, uh, SD card I have installed and I recommend you keep an SD card in these. Uh, and then it's looking for a GPS signal right now. I'm in the basement, so I can't get a clear lock on enough satellites. Uh, so it's just kind of searching around for a satellite right now. Down at the bottom, these are soft keys, function keys. And you can hit the F1 to go to F2 and F3, uh, which will change the buttons down here. Um, some of them are useful, many of them may not be as useful. Um, the VM will toggle between um, um, the channels. Uh, you can go to your call channel. Um, if you hit scan, you can scan all my channels. And you can see once it gets a strong lock on the Marvel Newtown channel, it's going to stop there for a minute and uh, listen in. <coughs> Someone's broadcasting nothing right now. Now it's scan through. Uh, you can. Pick a knob if you want to skip something. And then just hit scan, and it'll stop the scanning mode. Uh, the buttons on the bottom are fixed, so here's your menu button to get into the menu system, and then arrow up and down and go back. Um, home will take you to your home channel, which I don't have programmed. Um, the DR will take you from... Um, into digital mode and then you can see it went from FM to DV which is my digital voice and it also has a little icon so it's sending my GPS location as well. 
So if I'm in digital mode, um, I can touch my uh, channel and then I can go into a list or I can look for a close by repeater. So I will always go to a close by. Uh, you can look for all repeaters or just digital. So I'm gonna go to digital. It's telling me it's gonna search by my last GPS position um, because I don't have a fix on GPS right now. And then you can see here's all of the repeaters. So here's uh, Delstar East N3 AEC, uh, 6.8 miles to my southeast. Um, Eagle View, which is Montgomery County, that's north of here, 8.7 miles, AA3E. Uh, the Philadelphia Digital Radio Club is 9.8 miles to my east. Uh, Lima, which is Delstar West, um, is about 10 miles to my southwest from here. That's the W3AEC. Uh, if I go down, uh, Pope Copson um, have two uh, B and a C. One's UHF, one's VHF. Um, both 18 miles to my uh, west, uh, southwest here. So if I scroll through, I can uh, click on any of these channels and now I'm in digital mode for that, um, that station. Uh, if I hit DR, it goes back to the memories. Now on the memories, I can still go to a digital channel uh, which start at 10. You can see here's W3AEC Lima. It's the same frequency. It also is digital voice. Uh, so it's this and this are identical. Um, just when you're in DR mode, um, you just have a few more um, options and settings and things. Uh, also the menu at the bottom changes when you're in DR mode as well. So you can do things like um, uh, sending files, sending locations, uh, all kinds of neat things, uh, kind of outside of the scope of an introductory video, but uh, nonetheless, yeah, pretty interesting. In the menu system, there's a lot of great stuff in here. Um, you should probably go through. Um, one thing is GPS, um, so you can set it up to transmit your GPS location, which I would recommend turning that on, uh, and then you can get your GPS uh, position in here. Obviously, I don't have one, but it would tell you your um, altitude, speed if you're traveling, and your latitude, longitude here. Uh, call sign, you can see I have W3CTK set up. So it will transmit that on digital. Um, my station, you can see I have my call sign and I have a message set up. So it sends my name and radio model number, which is nice. Uh, QSO or X logs are nice. I recommend turning these on as well. Um, just so you have a record of transmissions, always helpful. Um, under display, there's a ton of uh, um, display settings you'll probably want to play with uh, as far as the backlight power. Um, obviously, you set it lower and you'll save power, set it higher, and it's easier to see in daytime. Uh, the contrast and all of that's in there. Uh, sounds, um, SD card, which is nice. Uh, you can save your settings. Uh, I'll click new file. Uh, it'll come up with a file name and I'll hit enter. Save file, yes. And now it's basically taking all of my settings and saving it onto a new file on my SD card. So if I change my settings and I do something and don't like it, I can always uh, restore a settings file. Uh, you can also import and export. Um, call sign, repeater list, and GPS memory. Um, under others, uh, one thing is the repeater mode, which is really cool, which uh, is only on this 5100. 
So let's uh, get out of the menu. I'm going to have my analog primary resource channel here. And let's say um, I'm in a location and I have a bunch of people handheld and they can't get to the booth one repeater because of line of sight and distance issues, power issues. Um, but my 5100 can get there because I have more power, I have a better antenna. So what you could do is set that here, go to your secondary channel, and since this is um, a 440, we need to select a simplex channel that's in the 144 band uh, and set that up. So we can use S1 Tactical if we go into Main Menu, Repeater Mode, you go Repeater Mode, and it, yes, Enter Repeater Mode. So now the menu down here changes and it blinks Repeat. And anyone who broadcasts on 146.565 uh, will be picked up here and then retransmitted to the repeater. Uh, and then obviously anything that the repeater sends out will be rebroadcast via simplex on the S1 Tactical channel. Um, so this is really helpful if you are in a um, location that has maybe trouble hitting a repeater that you would normally use. Um, uh, you can set this up for everybody to be able to communicate better. And if you hit the blank, the blinking RPT, it'll say exit. And yes, you can exit. Uh, so that's about it for a basic overview of the 5100. Um, also the microphone, uh, just show that to you real quick um, because that's helpful. So if I go here, um, main things are I can use these arrow keys here and cycle through my channels, which is nice. I can use these arrow keys here and change my volume up and down. Uh, I can use this to switch back and forth between what my primary and sub band are. So here I'll broadcast on S1 Tactical, here I'll broadcast on the resource repeater. Uh, if I click and hold here, I can lock my channels so I don't accidentally uh, switch off of uh, the channels that I'm on. And if I press and hold that again, it'll turn the lock off. Obviously press the talk, um, and then there's a bunch of other things you can do, but those are the primary things that uh, I found useful on the remote. Uh, so that's everything. I'll probably put together a few more of these with some more details on specific functions, but I uh, hope that was helpful. Thanks.